Kenavatos, thanks again for tuning into yet another video. We are getting ready to test ride the Challenger Dark Horse yet again. This is now my third time. Is it my third time on this bike? Uh, over the last three, four years. I think, yeah, it's my third time. So, this of course is the competitor of the Road Glide. You guys can see it's a fixed fairing on this. A little bit uh, different aesthetically. You guys can see the shape of the fuel tank, the shape of the saddlebags, the shape of the of the fairing, and of course the uh, single headlight with the additional accident lighting. And you also have some passing lamps on this. Very impressive. So let's go ahead and get on this behemoth of a bike. Kicks over easily. Very impressive. Like I said, the engineering on these bikes is once again very impressive. All right, it's light, it's nimble. The engineering is really, really something else when you go when you come from a uh, a uh, Harley Davidson. So let's go ahead and turn it on. We have we have it on the on position. Now we gotta turn the starter, and it's pretty much set to go. So nice overall tft display infotainment system whatever you want to call it kickstand is still down and like always i can never reach these uh kickstands all right uh, looks like we are ready i believe we have this in we have it on uh in standard i think traction control is turned off for some reason traction control is off the bike feels nimble it is very light, well engineered, like I mentioned. And I'm not even sure. I'm not even sure. I'm not sure why is this taking forever to load. Let's go into settings. Oh, we're we're already in sport mode. Let's switch that to standard. What is that setting? I just realized the the additional control on the back. Let's see where the friction control is on the bike before we start to take off and it's towards the end of the bike this is now the second bike with a tight clutch the uh what was it the bobber the dark horse bobber had a tight a tight clutch this one feels a little bit too tight or maybe i just have small hands maybe that's what it is but we are once again on the Indian Challenger Dark Horse 2013, 20, oh, sorry, 2013, 2023, 2024. So let's see. Same thing we've been doing with the staggered form. Yes. Mm -hmm. Starting to get a little warm here now, but uh, man, it's really it's a really nice day to be out riding. Of course, this is a Friday, and uh, I am out sick. With the uh, with the cold, I am currently still sick, still fighting a, a cold. But man, this bike's really nice. I like the inner fairing on this, how it's painted. That is really really nice. It's got like a pearl black to it. I can see a little a little hint of of, of flake in it. So it's really nice having that little touch. Of course, you have the uh, the inner the inner fairing uh you know it's 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 got it's got that finish just like uh just like the uh the toy models uh from harley davidson when you have the special you have the st it, you know it's it's got that that finish it's not a, a, a matte or a dull finish really nice um overall the feel of the bike right now very very comfortable i've always been a little confused on how these handlebars uh are manufactured with the uh, the Challenger and the Pursuit because you can't really see the uh, the the uh, the triple trees from here. I mean, yeah, you, I'm obviously you have an idea where they're at. They're at the very top of the forks, but you can't really see the uh, the handlebars unless you really you know inch down and lean down. So. It's just, you know, it's, it's gonna be a little bizarre, the handlebars when it comes to, when you do, when you decide to swap them out, but the feel of of the handlebars right now, it's very comfortable, it's low. It's a, you know, it's a relaxed position. 
you know my arms aren't extended a little bend in my elbows i am five seven on five seven let's go ahead and lower the windshield it looks like the windshield does not work uh i know the windshield is a windshield that it's it's powered electronically but there is no uh it, it looks like it's it's in op the windshield and the navigation is still loading for some reason still loading but uh, anyways rider position very comfortable the seats on these touring models are also extremely extremely comfortable you have a two up seat on these bikes very very comfortable i'm flat footed flat footed five seven I'm, you know flat footed and everything let's see <laughs> this guy's trying to show off a pretty pretty girl in the uh, in the bmw over there he's just trying to show off a little bit not entirely sure what's going on behind me what is going on um anyways this is a liquid cooled indian it's not your typical air cooled push rod v twin so they've been manufacturing this engine for some time now uh, i believe they've worked out all the uh all the issues out of them i'm not entirely sure i don't really follow the indian scene that much so i'm not able to say you know overall long term you guys would have to share your comments if you had any issues but i haven't seen much issues in you know in the videos uh, i haven't seen much complaints about them like i said they've been out for three years four years now uh i believe it's called the power stroke right the engine is that what it's called i can't remember i just i just made a video about it the other the other day and i already forgot my my short-term memory just sucks but overall the performance from factory it's really you know it's really impressive you have 122 horsepower and 130 foot pounds of torque and that's from factory so that is you know impressive from factory okay that comes standard with the price tag i did make a video on that with the new cvos up against these challengers you know number wise specs and i haven't test ridden a new cvo a 121 bvt i haven't test ridden them but on on the spec list the challenger is very very impressive what they have to offer performance liquid cooled uh the suspension of course this is a electronic adjusted um, suspension on this thing as well so you could you could uh you could set it on the display i have a video on that very nice and of course all of that for under thirty-one thousand bucks or for thirty-one thousand two hundred dollars which is really quite nice all right considering that the cvos are going for forty-two thousand plus of course surcharge markups and fees i mean this bike is ten thousand dollars cheaper than than the cvo ten thousand dollars cheaper and in my opinion it offers you know maybe a little bit more uh you know as far as the rear you know the rear shock adjuster via tft display you don't have that in the new uh 121s the cvo so you know just overall the package that you get you i mean you always you would always get a, a, a better bang for your buck with the indians i've always mentioned this you had tft displays on the chiefs for some time now uh you still don't see that in the soft tail lineup uh you also have abs standard and a lot of the a lot of the chief models you don't have that with the soft tails you know the harley soft tails you don't have that you don't have you do not have abs standard on most of them except for the lowrider st depending on of course your country uh that that you know that's different but here in the here in the united states abs is not uh it's not a requirement uh you know to sell to sell bikes so abs has been left out on a lot of the soft tails so it's nice to see that indian still has that you know a lot of people don't want abs you have a little connector in the back where you could disconnect it if, if you want it's just nice to have that that uh, that option that feature if you do decide to resell the bike 
ABS could be, you know, a little bit of a selling point, a little bit of, you know, of additional value to the next person that might want ABS. And I've always, you know, mentioned this with rider assist. Uh, I've seen videos where it kicks in clutch. I mean, the the rider assist comes in clutch and it saves the rider, it saves the bike. So as far as rider assist, I, I kind of take it like an engine guard or, or you know, like a like a crash bar. You guys can see that here. Yes, you might be an experienced rider, but it's always good to just have it just in case. It's good to have it just in case. Because you never know. You, you might be out for game one day. You might be hung over one day. Uh, you won't be, like I said, focused or just something. I mean, anything can go wrong. You could be distracted by a pretty lady on the side of the road jogging. You know, stuff like that. Uh, it's happened to me last year when I was test riding the Pursuit I was looking at the display high I switched from day to night to night mode and when I looked up the the person in front of me was you know pretty much within uh, 15 feet doing of course 70 to 80 miles per hour I grabbed a handful of brake and luckily the ABS kicked in and helped me out and I know the ABS kicked in because the ABS indicator on the TFT uh, on the TFT displayed uh, was blinking uh, the ABS uh, indicator was blinking letting me know that uh, that it had in fact engaged it's always like weird just to kind of find the friction zone on these bikes it's always a little something we, we, we just got to figure it out it takes a little bit of getting used to this one like I said when the uh, when the uh, when the clutch is tight, the friction zone is at the very edge of the uh, of the of the lever of of the clutch. So it's always good to kind of figure out where the friction zone get get it, you know getting used to it because something like that you could you know you could potentially drop the bike when you're not uh, balanced or you know when, when you're not expecting the bike to stall out and you're in turn you could you could drop the bike. So Hopefully the next bike I get on doesn't have a tight clutch. So where were we overall uh, comparing, of course, the Road Glide? I think aesthetically the Road Glide, it, it's a good looking bike. Uh, you know, I'm not sure where I'm going with this video. Like I said, this is the third time. No. How many times have I tested in the, the Challenger? I've tested in it quite a few times already. And I guess I could keep on talking about the features. But I don't know. I mean, I've already, if you've seen any of my videos, I mean, it's still the same bike. They haven't done anything to it as far as performance. Like I said, the only new feature from from uh, from before was the uh, was the uh, was that uh, that electronic adjusted that electronic adjusted uh, rear shock. What is up with this guy? Did he honk? Man, why? Ah, it's just. <laughs> Anyways, it's... I don't know what's going on behind me. So, there's something going on behind me. Yeah, people that are just not really experienced with the bike. I know these demo days are fun, but when you're doing stuff, you know, when you're doing stupid things and. And you're not paying attention or you're riding a little reckless that puts me at uh at an unease state where i'm just constantly looking over my shoulder because i'm not sure what the idiot behind me is doing so anyways talking about the dark horse i don't know if you guys are are tired of me comparing these to harleys that's what i'm doing this year i, I think that's the difference of what i'm doing this year is the um it's just comparing them to the you know the counterparts of the model so you have the road glide like i mentioned i really like the overall look of the road glide i'm a big fan of the shark nose fairing huge huge fan okay uh, and like i've already mentioned in my videos even though uh you know even though the, the challenger has all of these wonderful features the inverted forks dual disc brakes the improved suspension, the handling, the engineering, how light the bike feels, the performance, 
from factory at 122 horsepower, you don't get that with the Roguelite. You don't get that with the ST. You probably get that with the CVO, but I mean, we're talking, like I said, an extra 10,000 bucks. You don't get that unless you spend close to 50,000, close to $50,000 on a Harley Davidson. You could get all of these features, uh, you know, for 25,000. We're talking about the standard Challenger, not the dark horse version of it, but the, sta the standard uh, Challenger has the 122 horsepower. It's got the same engine. It's got the same, the same main uh, features on, uh, on that bike. So it really is impressive. Let's go ahead and just put this in sport mode. Let's see how that feels. Obviously, I've already test ridden this in sport mode and it is noticeably responsive. Okay, I really like the way the, uh, the Challenger, the Pursuit handle the riding modes. It really is impressive. You can even hear the exhaust. It sounds more aggressive. Uh, just the, the overall package that you get with the Challenger, it really is unique. Uh, the suspension, the handling, the response, the performance, the wind control, zero buffeting, no wind buffeting, uh, no, you know, no wind on my chest, well, well protected. This fairing is amazing. Uh, like I said, it's a frame mounted fairing, just like the Road Glide. Frame mounted fairing, you guys can see there's audio built in. Uh, boom audio I believe the uh, the saddlebags also have it no they don't not this one the saddlebags do not have the speaker lids but uh, man it just wants to pick up it wants to pick up it wants to let loose in sport mode and I mean there's just a lot of benefits when you go with liquid cooled that you don't get with the uh, with the push rod design you know it just it manages heat better you could do overhead cams, kind of like what you have on this. So it's more of a modern take of a you know of a touring classic cruiser. That's that's what I'm talking about. This guy back here behind me. That's all. He just he just has me nervous. <laughs> he just has me nervous. All right. So we are riding in sixth. Wow. I didn't realize we were in sixth. Is that really sixth gear? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of stuff to like with the Challenger. I've already, you know, said a lot on the videos. Uh, you know, just bang for your buck. The Challenger, it, I mean, I, you get a lot. I just, these are just demo rides. They're first impressions. They're not, you know, long-term reviews of any kind or anything like that. Of course, everybody's going to have a different opinion to them. Uh, but overall, comfort... The, my triangle very relaxed upright triangle really very 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 relaxed upright uh, triangle so uh, you know just the feel of the handlebars the placement my feet uh, you know it's just everything so far the controls are at reach the TFT display is a little bit closer in my opinion that's what it feels like you're not reaching a little bit too far away from your seat like you do get with the uh, with the Rogue Glide. The Rogue Glide fairing does sit a little bit further away from the rider. And I think that's why it's a little bit odd, the handlebars. Because the TFT and the display, uh, your gauges, everything's up above your, uh, your, uh, your uh, triple trees. That's, you know, that's that's just the one odd factor about these handlebars is that uh, it's just that the uh, the fairing sits above the uh, the triple trees or your or your fork uh, brackets or whatever you want to call them. Life's a risk. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more demo rides. Get out there and ride later.